Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 17th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording well from virtual San Diego, at least uh, that's where the conference I'm teaching at this week would have happened. Microsoft uh, today published a new one-click Microsoft Exchange on-premises mitigation tool. This tool is, as Microsoft says, the quickest way and easiest way uh, to mitigate the proxy logon vulnerability on Exchange servers. Now, first of all, there's one thing the tool does not do. It does not apply the patch, but it does implement other mitigation techniques that Microsoft outlined before. For example, there are some IIS uh, rewrite rules and so that can be used to prevent some of the exploits. This tool will also check if your server is already compromised. These checks are done based on the type of exploits that Microsoft has seen so far. So for example, the tool will look for existing web shells and it also includes the latest version of Microsoft Safety Scanner. Microsoft Safety Scanner, unlike a normal anti-malware product, is not something that sort of detects a wide range of malware or runs in the background. It's a tool that you're running on demand to look for specific threats, like in this case, for exploits and backdoors and the like being left behind by common proxy logon uh, exploits. So you definitely uh, should do a manual scan as well after running the tool, but it's a Real good uh, first tool to run. It's quick, it's simple, and is likely to find any exploits that were left behind using the proxy logon vulnerability. So in short, if you are coming across an Exchange server that hasn't been patched yet, uh, run this tool first, uh, make sure it hasn't been compromised, and then still apply the patch. And well, sticking with Microsoft for another story, yesterday, of course, Microsoft had an outage of its Azure Active Directory system. And today, Microsoft published a pretty nice and detailed uh, document explaining what exactly happened. It's always good if service providers do publish documents like this uh, because there's always a chance uh, to learn and avoid the same mistakes. In this particular case, it looked like that for Azure Active Directory, Microsoft, as you should, rotates its cryptographic keys periodically. So every so often old keys are removed, new keys are issued, and they have a script that automates the process. Now, occasionally they do have uh, processes uh, that do require keys that are longer lived. And in this case, they can mark certain keys as a retain, so they're not rotated. In this particular case, however, this retain state was ignored, the key was removed. This caused this process to fail, which then of course led to the outage that we observed yesterday. Key rotation is a tricky issue, and of course automation is the way to do it, so no fault here uh, with uh, Microsoft. But yes, uh, testing some of these exceptions uh, is important, and that's apparently what was missing here. And for additional details, uh, you'll find a link uh, to uh, the document in the show notes. Over the last few years, we had a number of attacks against processors microarchitecture that did lead to side channel vulnerabilities that allowed an attacker to learn about memory content or processes that an attacker would otherwise not have access to. The most dangerous of these attacks are possible via a browser. So the only thing the victim has to do is visit a malicious web page. And browsers have attempted to mitigate these attacks by restricting some JavaScript functionality. 
Now, a group of researchers from various universities uh, now developed an attack that did not rely on JavaScript. Instead, it uses cascading style sheets and also includes uh, the new Apple M1 processor as a new target that could be exploited with uh, this technique. The technique is, well, at the surface, relatively straightforward. Essentially, it takes advantage of attribute-based style sheets where you have attributes with very long names. It then measures the timing that the string search takes for these names by including a remote resource uh, in uh, this uh, particular style and then measuring the time it takes until you see the DNS lookup for this remote resource. At least according to the paper, the timing is promising and the attack is possible, even though not quite as accurate as what was accomplished with JavaScript. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.